you know, I didn't expect people to actually ask for the next 12 episodes, but... Uh... I was also made aware that there's another manga for the series, but I'm still gonna stick to the one. So here we go, episode 13 to 24 of Apothecary Diaries. Just immediately starting off, the manga skipped a scene, which is fun. It's not even the case of the anime adding things, which it does do a fair bit for the sake of fluidity. Like, it has Mama leaving the brothel and a bit more details about that test she quite miserably failed. I mean, it sounded like dry subject matter to be fair. Pretty consistently though, I find that the anime adds little intro scenes just to make things flow a bit better, which is cool. The novel gets to be more detailed and the manga does take a fair bit from that. Like, for the bugs. It was called Dong Chong Shao Chao Winter Worm. Summer weed, otherwise sometimes known as caterpillar fungus. Cordyceps in English. It's Chinese to me. Literally. Novel also had a fun detail. You know the underwear made out of hair? Apparently, it had a name embroidered into it, which I think makes it kinda worse. Or maybe it's just name brand. Calvin Klein? It's written all over your underwear. Going back on the anime, the intro with Ludan was added in. Like I said like two seconds ago, anime really likes their little teasers, you know? But I guess the section is, well, it was the pipe in the novel, but the court is in lessons, if you could call it that. It certainly drew a crowd, much to Jinchi's dismay, and they were visibly disappointed to be told to leave in the manga, though their anime and novel counterparts were only really there for Jinchi, but curiosity got the better of the novel ones as they were also trying to listen in. Considering the hall was built to hold 200 people, it's pretty big. Suffice to say, they heard nothing. Not even the varying reactions of the courtesans inside. A lot of visuals from that were taken directly from the manga, though the novel says each had her own reaction as she took her copy, widening eyes, an amused chuckle, a furious flush of the cheeks, and a furrowed brow. So Lulan wasn't as non-receptive. So back to the pipe, the anime had another little mid-episode intro to the topic with Mau Mau hearing an explosion in the distance and Nixon on the job, and I guess Nixon was a bit impatient cause his original debut was volume 5 of the novel and he makes another appearance before the season's even up. Anyways, Mau Mau and her dumb mutt Dihaku's investigation was pretty well identical. She literally calls him that internally by the way. They do have a bit more conversation outside the anime where Lihaku heard about a courtesan being bought out and about people being unhappy with the previous emperor specifically because he would go on hunts for women, if you could call them that, and most villages were suffering from that because it left a shortage of potential brides. Knowing his, uh, particular taste, it kind of checks out that the problem really blossomed later, much like the concubines in question. Excuse me while I go throw up. I'm not as used to it as Mau Mau, who was forced to throw up a second time in the novel during the seaweed incident. There was a lot of puttuck this episode, but all three media forms were pretty damn identical. Anime gave us a little bit more on Bassent and naturally another little intro scene at the start. The novel told us the old lady flushed Mau Mau's stomach with water after she ate fugu liver and that Mau Mau ate the poison seaweed from her little demo making Jinchi force her to throw up again. And the manga, I guess, was just kind of doing its best. This brings us to the sullen and morose metal workers, as the novel put it. I think the first thing to point out here is the dresser. The anime took a lot of visuals from the manga in this section, but the novel describes something different. The overall shape was not quite like anything Mau Mau had ever seen. While I don't know what this means, I like to think it was Jack Black's face because at this point, I think I'll take any role if it's ridiculous enough. Other than that, I think the biggest difference is how it all ends. The anime gave them a nice conclusion, the brothers work together, and have a nice, functioning business together. The manga and novel weren't so nice. Even while leaving after settling the matter, the older two were fighting and the end result we are told is that they reconciled on the outside. Not so much on the inside, but whatever that implies, it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter to Mau Mau. And moving on, we have the continued joke of Mau Mau looking at Jinchi. This time we got a caterpillar, a dead bug, and a puddle of mud. 
This conversation actually happened while Jinshi was eating because Mao Mao is still a poison tester while working under Jinshi, and everything he eats and drinks out of is naturally made out of silver. This along with her other responsibilities, which I guess now includes makeup. I just kind of wish the anime kept how aggressively Mao Mao smelled Jinshi. That was something. Even though she did that in the manga too, the manga for some reason skipped the explanation of the smell of the clientele. That aside, the anime once again takes a lot of visuals from the manga, except Basin. I don't know why he's following, I guess it makes sense, but that wasn't the case anywhere else. Additions aren't bad though, like Sweden looking at Jinshi's old stuff is a nice little plus. Opposed to things like that, the novel really focuses on keeping the world alive, just describing the things around them like men buying gifts for their quote, nighttime butterflies. It doesn't push the story along like the supposed nightmare she had, but didn't have, at least not at this point, though I guess flow is way more important in the anime, adding in the Paiden scene and having a bath scene. Why always a bath scene? For those keeping count at home, we're in episode 18 now, and let me just throw in a complaint. They did a funny little shuffle with the order of things here, and it makes it really annoying to follow along. Not to say what happened is different, just shuffled for pacing, I guess. It is nice seeing a bit more of the characters, though, in the novel. Like, their personality. Like Suida in here, who puts out sweet snacks for Mama, who prefers salty, and kind of just ate salty crackers on her own and intentionally mocked Mama with them. Very Jinshi like. Also, Le Kang. Think he was annoying in the anime. Dude brings in his own couch into Jinshi's office and leaves it there. Not to mention the food he brings with him. It's often crumbly and leaves oil stains on things. But I think what we all want to know is about the look. So here you go. Mamo looked as if she might smash open his heart and pour in molten metal so that not even ashes remain. That's pretty damn specific, just like how specific things are named, like ginger and not just these herbs. Which brings us to our first big conclusion, where things were very similar. I guess the only early difference is that they were wondering why someone would give away a fancy pipe and novel Mau Mau gave us a reason. When courtesans receive a gift from a particularly despised customer, they would promptly sell it for cash or otherwise give it to someone else. Then one thing leads to another and Jinshi almost turns into a pancake and carries half-dead Mau Mau away. In the anime. Last we see from Mau Mau is her leg is stuck under a metal beam and she just passes out and wakes up in episode 20. Just in time to explain everything as any good apothecary would. First off, apparently it's bad manners to sit in front of your master. I didn't know this, but it's why she apologized for being rude. Novel Mama had the decency to change into her normal clothes though. Decency by noble standards? That's actually a tad insane. Anyways, we know the metal worker died of lead poisoning, but it's heavily implied this was helped along. Maybe by receiving a gift of wine and a lead drinking cup. There are other ways. At least he got a proper burial. Can't say the same for Redead Sude, who was going to be cremated. Turns out that's how you punish a corpse. People who died in jail or were found guilty while dead were cremated. Good thing Mao Mao told Gaoshan to bring that hoe with him and knew a bit about that weird medicine. Turns out Mao Mao's dad told her a story of the medicine from when he was overseas. Mao Mao, being the absolute child from hell, sorta learned how to read western text from foreigner visitors and tried to read her dad's book on the topic. So he burned it. Blood for the blood god. And with that smooth transition, the anime brings us into something new with... I don't know what the hell is going on here. But Jinshi and Gaoshan. The manga and novel were very liberal in doxing these two, so here's enough information to probably get you beheaded. Gaoshan is 37, married at 16, and had three kids, one every year after marriage. His kids are Jinshi's, quote, milk brothers, as his wife was Jinshi's wet nurse, so Jinshi can never really outlive his debt to this guy. Furthermore, the drink they are drinking is ground root vegetable, amongst other things, more than likely what Mama was sent to pick up. If anyone is confused about this medicine, the novel says it's medicine that made him not a man. Probably a testosterone suppressant of some kind? Obviously, this drink means we know Jinshi isn't a eunuch. And that comes with a hell of a kicker from the Emperor in the novel. Jinshi was told that he could do as he wished around the lower rank consorts and anyone under them. Obviously the high rank consorts are more important and thanks to Mao Mao's lessons, apparently a new pregnancy marked by her quote lunar cycle. 
I kind of like how the novel called it the Path of the Moon. Feels like some kind of skill tree. Or Sokka's girlfriend. My first girlfriend turned into the moon. That's rough, buddy. But of course we know pregnancies need to be kept a secret, so the Emperor keeps coming to Gyokuyo to not rouse suspicion, and novel Mau Mau has a solution for this backed up horn dog. Leave ancient Chinese porn mags for the dude. Amazing. But on to the last section, all the stuff with Lakan and Fon Shen, which all starts with Lihaku. Well, sort of. We quickly deal with the quack first, and the only reason I bring this up is because Mau Mau uses a Jinshi Reserve look on him, like looking into a puddle full of mosquito larvae. So yeah, Nihaku, the guy who, as the manga and novel said, when he first met Paiden, stayed in her room for two days. Paiden, the one who Mau Mau believes practices Fang Zongju, the Taoist art of the bedchamber which promotes health through sexual activities. She says it herself, Nihaku has amazing stamina. He doesn't know it, but he gets to spend more time with Paiden than usual specifically because the old lady needs something to sate her. Well, between the manga and novel, we get a nice look into Lihaku's brain and let me say, he's Halu. Here's a bunch of quotes. Those who would tell him that Paiden was no good for him no doubt had his best interests at heart, and for that he was grateful, but he wished they would butt out. He didn't care if it was real or not, as long as he believed in it, it didn't matter. It was part of Paiden's business to be as unreachable as a flower on a distant peak. If she charged a month's silver for a cup of tea, who was anyone to say that was greedy? And finally, any who claimed she was too expensive simply didn't understand. Dude is way too far gone. Well, at least the anime and manga show him putting in the effort. Let's forget Lihaku now, that kind of starting shit with blue roses. Cause really, as Mao Mao says, I'm an apothecary, not a botanist. But I'm a doctor, not a botanist. Really, the novel and manga kind of powered through this bit, so most of this was the anime elaborating on plant care and explaining it to Jinshi. In the manga, Mao Mao never even explains the process to the Emperor. Lakan himself is, to nobody's surprise, a bit of a crazy person. In the manga and novel, he didn't even notice he pulled the hat and wig off the guy. He was half asleep and just did whatever. Also his face issue. Going forward, just know that the novel uses Shogi instead of Shang-Chi every single time. Mao Mao played Shogi with him. He sees people as Shogi tiles. He is a Shogi expert. Also, I guess Manga Lakan is smarter? Cause apparently he saw the buy a courtesan thing coming. But yeah, their game, naturally, we see actual moves happening in the anime and according to some guy on Reddit, the most trustworthy of sources, Mamo did in fact make terrible moves. Naturally, take that one with a grain of salt. Just like how Lacan took his drink with some sugar and salt, the so-called poison. Not nearly as poisonous as what his colleague dragged him into with Feng Shen. Turns out that dude was spiteful and just wanted to hand him a loss, and honestly, he certainly handed Lacan a hell of a loss. Additionally, the first time Lacan saw Child Mao Mao, the anime shortened it a bit, but I understand novel Mao Mao's trauma being approached like that by a smiling man covered in blood. Dude's history is a mess, but at least he got one W. After the time skip, novel Lacan woke up after the incident. He stole back his birthright from his half-brother and adopted his nephew, then used that money to get back into the Verdigris house by paying, over the course of 10 years, double the money of the damages he had caused. At least he found Feng Shen. While having him fall all over the place wasn't bad in the anime, I do like the idea of him jumping out a window like he did in the manga and novel as he heard the song though. By the way, that song has much less meaning in the novel, so I guess props to the other two. He just heard a song and went for it, with Mei Mei following behind. And everyone lived happily ever after. But not for you. I feel like it was implied, but she has a thing for Lacan, and the anime left out a line that I feel was a nail in the coffin. Why not let it be over before I started to hope? Mama would have preferred Mei Mei to be chosen, which was pointed out maybe a few too many times. There was even a note hidden under the rose that was given to Lacan. Although, the manga and anime left that out for good reason. Lacan never found it. We don't even know exactly what was written on it. What we do know is that Mei Mei's letter to Mao Mao was streaked with droplets as she cried as she wrote. Oof. And to not end on that 
kind of sad note. Fun little thing about Mau Mau's dress is that there are rocks inside to make it flow better, and there was a funny scene after all this where Jinshi folded to Mau Mau's demands. This led to a rumor that a profligate noble was buying up rare and unusual medicines, and that led to Jinshi's office being filled with get well soon flowers. Poor guy. Oh yeah, and Lacan's monocle? It's fake. And that's the end of Season 1. Naturally, at this point, we know there will be a Season 2, and it's absolutely something to look forward to. There was definitely no better version, manga, anime, novel. Whether you like one over the other is up to you, but I had fun with it all. If you have any requests or ideas for other comparisons you may want to see, leave a comment down below. Anyways, feel free to like, sub, cry in a corner, I don't know, but I'll catch you next time.